Hello everybody, uh, welcome to today's uh, tutorial video. Um, today we're going to do um, a little bit on importing data, uh, how to store that data and then ultimately accessing that data to uh, use as inputs into uh, some new functions that we'll make. Um, so I'm just going to go first to the worksheet in the tutorials folder. On Blackboard. Okay, so today our ultimate aim is to develop a trim calculator. Um, so you'll find in the Blackboard folder you'll find a few data uh, sources there. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to import uh, data relating to the aerodynamic performance of the aerofoil section. Um, and we're going to turn that into a three-dimensional aerodynamic uh, lift and drag coefficients and that means we need to actually import firstly the the aerodynamic data relating to the 2d airfoil and that's something we uh, can't get without either doing an experiment um, on a 2d airfoil section at wind tunnel by doing a cfd experiment or taking it from the published literature um, so Firstly, I thought it would be useful to show you where I got the airfoil data. So that's this bit here, that NACA 23112, that relates to uh, a, a particular airfoil cross-section. So if I go to the website that I got this from, it's called airfoiltools.com. Um, if I click on airfoil search and I put in, well actually I could do it through looking at the NACA five-digit airfoils, scroll down. 23112 so there it is and i just click on that so that's what the aerofoil looks like okay and in these um on this website you can download the coordinates of the of the airfoil as well um so if i go to airfoil details okay and it gives me a bunch of data um relating to the performance of that airfoil at different flow reynolds numbers all right, so we're interested in the, uh, and by the way, this, this, this is, all of this data is based on uh, another piece of software called Xfoil, which uh, somebody in the States at MIT developed, a guy called Mark Dreller, and that's based on uh, a, a theory called um, panel method. Um, and so it is a theoretical prediction of lift to drag, lift and drag um, coefficients, but um, it's pretty good. Um, and we can use this data, certainly in the first instance, to to get some aerodynamic um, um, coefficients to use in our, uh, in our own code. If you look here, you can see that there are similar airfoils to the one that we've selected, to the 23112 airfoil. Um, Honora, which is like a research institute in France, that's one of the, one of the airfoils. Boeing 737 midspan, so the, the airfoil section at the midspan of the Boeing 737 wing, we could have used that one. That's what that looks like. Not too dissimilar to, to this shape. Okay, um, we're using 23112 because it's quite a well-known um, airfoil section and I quite like you to read up on NACA airfoils. Um, if you go into Wikipedia, you can read about how airfoil sections are named and why, why that, what those 23112 digits uh, relate to. Okay, um, so yeah, have a read of that. It's pretty interesting. It relates to some equations. That's what the numbers are there for. They're inputs into that into those equations. Okay, back to the data. So our cruise Reynolds number is in the millions. So we're going to use the high Reynolds number airfoil. If we wanted to operate this wing at lower Reynolds number, we'd pick one of the other data files. So these lines actually relate to different uh, Reynolds numbers. Um, so you see slightly different performance based on um how how developed the flow is whether it's turbulent or not um okay so we click on xfoil prediction okay and we can download the data file um it's not there actually Here it is. Okay, so download as CSV file or as a text file. So I just downloaded it as a text file and saved it to my working directory. 
which I'm going to have as here. Okay, so mine's already there, so overwrite that. Okay, so now if I go to my, if I set my working directory now to being um, where that data is stored. And notice that the data is there, text file there. Okay, if you click on it, um, we can use it in a moment. Okay, so we have the text file now containing all the data. In fact, if I open it, I can actually open it in the editor because it's a text file and you can see all the data there. So we could, if we wanted to do it really by manually, we could just copy and paste into a into a um, an unused variable if we wanted. But we're going to do something a bit more. Uh, a bit cleverer than that, we're going to use the import tool. So if you click on import data, um, and I click on the select the text file that contains the data, press open, we get the a graphical user interface, which is MATLAB's own import tool. Okay, so MATLAB, when we do this, this is because I was doing this earlier, it's going to look something like that um, when you first open it for the first time. The shaded area is what MATLAB thinks is the bit of the text file that contains the data. Uh, we don't need all of that data, so I'm just going to reduce the limit of um, what data is going to be imported. Don't need those last two columns, so I'm just going to shrink the data um, selected to those five columns and all the rows. You see there's uh, additionally there's some header information that's going to be useful to us. We would like to name, we would like these to appear as arrays that we can use in our workspace. So we want these arrays to be named and we name them with the header um, headers of each of the columns. So MATLAB can, rec can, can import the header information as well if you tell it where to find that header information. And that's in this bit here where it says variable names row. So which row does MATLAB want to use to uh, to gather the information for the headers. So we say row 11, let's put 11 in there. The range, um, the data range uh, is also written up there. So as we as we move that, that changes, you see F. Okay, and that, that's changed to E now. Output type, we have several different types of output we can produce. If we just had strings, if we just had words in, in this file, then we might want a string array rather than a number array. Um, we may just want all of the data in a big one, big table. So it just looks as one variable for all of that information. But I want column data. I want each column to represent one variable. So I'm going to call the output column vectors. And I'm going to... Um, well before I do that, I'm just going to clear my workspace just to avoid confusion. Oops. Okay, so I'm ready with that now. I'm just going to press import and it tells me the following variables were imported. Okay, so it's imported the variables I want. So I can close that down. If I go to workspace now, I can see alpha1, cd, cdp, clcm. And they relate to exactly to this information in the text file. Okay, so now, now I've imported the data I need into the workspace. Okay, if I wanted to check on some of that data, I can do a quick plot just to see if it all makes sense. So I'm plotting here alpha 1, which is my angle of attack, um, with my lift coefficient. I'm putting the colon in there to tell MATLAB that I want all of the elements in the array to be displayed. Okay, I think the figure's probably somewhere behind. Oh, there it is. Okay, so, so what this is doing is plotting this data here. Well, it's taking it from my variable alpha and my variable CL. Okay. Um, which corresponds to this data that we, this is the text file still being shown. Okay. So you can see here, this is a range of angles of attack in degrees, and this is the lift coefficient. Okay, so maximum lift coefficient of around 1.5, and that's occurring at the angle of attack of around 15. Okay, so the angle of attack is 
the stall is about 15 degrees for this 2D airfoil. Okay, we can also have a look at the uh, drag data if we want. Um, if we want to put it on the same, let's do that in fact just for it. Actually, no, let's not do that. Plot that. Okay, so this is our drag coefficient data again, angle of attack on the bottom on the x axis, uh, drag coefficient on the y. Might also want to show the lift to drag ratio as a function of angle of attack. And I put this dot divide. So what that dot divide does is it makes sure that, sure that each element of the array um, uses the corresponding element in the other array that you're using rather than perform a matrix operation. Okay, so if I have uh, one, uh, one, one of CL, it's going to divide by one, one of CD. Okay, so if I plot that, we see the lift to drag ratio variation with angle of attack. So this is talking about what I talked about in the well, this is illustrating what I talked about in the lectures, which is that the lift to drag ratio, which is kind of like our aerodynamic efficiency, also varies as a function of angle of attack. And that's really important because we may wish to fly at this angle of attack. So that's, that's when we know we're getting the most amount of lift for the least amount of drag. And that's maybe more, uh, more better for our performance. It's going to result in less fuel burn. OK, so that was a quick introduction, introduction to importing data. Um, and that's pretty much it.